Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum. So last time we made our way through the Distortion world, and we also defeated Cyrus for the very last time. And now we're going to be trying to save the world, I guess. We're going to be taking the fight to Giratina. And we're going to test our strength against them. And here they are. So yeah, you probably want to save here. If you want to try and catch it, so yeah. That's what we're going to do. But yeah, get ready for also one of my favorite bar themes in any video game I think as well. This is Garatina. The Distortion World's Garatina up here. Level 47. Ghost Dragon type with levity ability. He has the moves Omniswind, Ancient Power, Dragon Claw, and Shadow Force. So yeah, I love this battle move so much. It just fits Garatina super well. That's why I also stay quiet for a little bit, because yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to you know, <laughs> show why I like this so much. But anyway, let's actually talk about Garatina's Pokemon. So it's actually kind of interesting, because this Garatina is in the origin form, which means it has the limiting flexibility, like I just said. It also has slightly different stats compared to its um, record. Hey, if it level up, it does get some other really cool moves. And... Oh, perfect. So you can start catching it. So, I think in this fight, Dust Balls don't work. I could be very wrong, but yeah. I believe our best choice of Pokemon is going to be Yorgin. Anyway, so if it level up, it does get some amazing moves, like, um... Like, Tranquil and Shadowfalls are great. I didn't talk about what Shadowfalls does, but it's 120 power physical ghost type move, but it's two turns, but in exchange it goes through protect, which is really nice. It also gets like Earth Power and Aura Speed up level, which is really cool. Other moves it gets via TM. You can also use Calm. It can special attack a little bit, so yeah. You can get like Thunderbolt, Earthquake, Shadow Ball. Energy Ball, Charge Beam, Dragon Pulse, will -O -Wisp, um, Stone Edge, Thunder Wave, there's so many great moves that's moves up. It also gets Drake Me, obviously. Mood Tutors, um, I guess you could consider like Aqua Tail, Iron Head, maybe not Iron Head, Outreach Sun's for them. Mood Tutors, um, yeah, that's all the Mood Tutors. And then finally the stats. So Origin from Garatina is very offensive. 120 attack, special attack, 100 defenses, 90 speed, 150 HP. So it's not only very strong, but it takes it for eight for days basically. <laughs> because 150 HP that's a lot. So yeah. There's a shower force. While it's shower force, you know, you can't from focus on it. So there's a good time to use a healing. So yeah, that's Garatina. Let's talk a little bit about why I like Garatina so much. Of course the design is one reason why. It looks awesome. And also the fact that it's kind of like... It's kind of an evil Pokemon of sorts, but not really. Considering the fact that, yeah, it did try to... Um, it did try to help us against Cyrus, obviously, so yeah. 
it's not as sorry as it does, it doesn't like it, and then you attract us into it as well, the distortion ones here. Yeah. I'm not so sure if it would be considered evil bug, I know it's Pokedex Century kind of states something like that, but yeah, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, I got some topics because, yeah, despite the fact that it's really low on health and it's paralyzed, yeah, it's really not doing much with Pokeballs. So, yeah, let's do some topics. So, the first one. This is more like a question than a topic, but yeah, I wanted to try and answer it anyway. So, in my last community post, like, one weird thing I'm doing in my community post is I'm actually putting random pictures of things that are coming to my mind. Again, it's using Shadow Force, so I should heal. So, last time out, I had this picture of an interesting looking girl. I'll put the picture on screen just so everyone has the context. So, yeah. One of my commenters wanted to ask who that person was, and that person is Ruriko. They're from a game called Shizuku. I talked about Shizuku before, while I was playing Persona 3, because it's um, one of the first vision games. It was also the first game to be called Vision Level 2, because yeah, it's the first game in Leaf's Vision Level series, and Leaf makes, well, Vision Levels. <laughs> That's what they're known for, but yeah. She's one of the main heroines in Shizuku, and the most important as well. She's kind of like tied to the main themes of the game, so yeah. That's why she's kind of important, so yeah. And yeah, that CG of her with the sunset and on the roof, it's very memorable. They, the game itself... I don't really think Shizuku's that good, because it's a visual novel with a kind of bad plot, which, yeah, that's not a good thing. <laughs> like, uh, I watched a video about it, yeah, the story is very good. And yeah, it's not even an uh, off-its-time thing, because the yeah, other visual novels or adventure games during that time, he also had, like, they had much better plots, to be honest, so yeah. That's another thing that the person who made that video pointed out, so yeah. So again, yeah, not a great game, but it was very influential. And yeah, Leaf are going to make much more popular visual of the so, yeah. so yeah, like I said, yeah. But yeah, the game can't really get out of my head, besides the fact that yeah, it's not very good. And that's maybe because this is also related to Ruriko, but her theme when the world changes, I've been listening to that so much because it's really good. I really like listening to that, so yeah, I even made a playlist of a lot of versions of when the world changes, so yeah. So yeah, that's who that person is, so yeah. And again, that was something that my commenters wanted to talk about. Anyway, ah, uh, almost. So yeah, let's talk about the next topic. So the next topic is, um, Chikorita. <laughs> that seems kind of random, but why not? Let's talk about Chikorita. So Chikorita is the grass type star in Gen 2. It's not very well liked by a lot of people, and that's... And to be honest though, it's not really its fault. It's not even that bad of a Pokemon, to be honest. Like, it learns a lot of moves that most grass tech Pokemon don't learn. It's actually a bit level up. I think it gets, like, screens bit level up and stuff. It's really cool, actually. But yeah, the main issue that people have with it, though, is its tight matchup against the gyms. Basically, yeah, grass tech Pokemon really don't like the gyms in Johto. Like, the first two gyms are a flying-type gym and a blood-type gym in here. You can probably tell, yeah, that's not good for a grass-type. Then again, the fact that the starter doesn't have a good... Um, I'm actually going to use a Reviper, because as you saw that, yeah... Jitayu is able to tank... Um, Giratina, because it has two close targets. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about Chikorita, so yeah, again, I don't think it's even... <laughs> the fact that the star does have a good tight matchup against the gyms. Like, the other stars don't have a much better Evo, like, everyone, all of them struggle against the third gym, and all of them struggle against the fourth gym to an extent, too, so yeah. Again, it's not like something that's just Chikorita's problem. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, um... Cyndaquil, it has only like two really good um, 
type matchups, and that's like the flood type gym and the steel trap gym, because there isn't ice type gym, but um, they use water types maybe, so yeah. It's not what I call a good type matchup for uh, type blue gym, but yeah. But yeah, that's that. But yeah, like I said, it isn't going to interest me a lot because, again, its unique attributes are actually really cool. It does do a lot of things that the cross type of do. I think mean, the only issue I have is that, yeah, it doesn't really learn that many good support moves. Like, I kind of wish it learned Beat Shield really level up, but yeah, other than that, though, it does learn some other very good moves. I think if I were to use it again, I probably might try a dual screen sub or something like that. We'll see. I need to look at its move pool again. I'm kind of just going off the top of my memory of it, so yeah. Probably gonna heal here, I think. Oh, we just got crit. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna this stuff. Anyway. Mm, do I throw the ball? I think I will. Anyway. So, imagine from that. So yeah. Yeah, like I said. Again, I don't think Chikri is even that bad. Like, yeah, I know that, like, compared to the other stars, it doesn't look that amazing, but yeah, it's still a cool design. And like I said, it does do a lot of things that not a lot of other cross types do as well, so yeah. I definitely want to try using it again. I've, I haven't used that much because my favorite starter is Tudor so yeah. In Generation 2, so yeah, like I said, I'm willing to give it a minute. one day, we'll see. But anyway, let's look at the Sinnoh decks now. Nah, I've done that. I, can't, I don't know what else I can add to that because again, it's been a while since I've played Hot Gold, so yeah. It's definitely been more than a couple of years, so yeah. But yeah, anyway, let's go to the next thing, which is talking about the Sinnoh decks. So yeah, in Diamond and Pearl, I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. Um, I mean, actually, we'll talk about the Gen 4 Pokemon first. I will say, yeah, I am quite a big fan of a lot of the Gen 4 Pokemon. There's a lot of good ones. Um, and yeah, they do take advantage of the physical and special spec quite well as well. As for the Dex itself, yeah, Dynapole is kind of lacking in a lot of Pokemon. I think the main problem I have with it is not the lack of types, like the fire type. It's the fact that they introduced a lot of new evolutions, but for some reason decided not to add them to the Pokedex until Platinum, which is kind of dumb. Like. Which, yeah, that, I don't like the fact that that's also a thing in, um, <laughs> brilliant Diamond Shine Pulp, but yeah, we'll talk about later. It's been quite a while, let me try a time. But anyway, that's our topic, so yeah. So yeah, again, like I said, I mean, the Pokemon in there weren't too bad. I also don't like the fact that some Pokemon were just kind of too rare to find, like the Honey Pokemon as well. But of course, one thing that did happen though was Platinum. I'm gonna heal, because yeah, you guys are actually taking the hits really well because of good defense, so yeah. Anyway, so back to the rest. So, um... Yeah, like I said, there's some Pokemon that I would use, but they're kind of rare, too rare to be honest, so yeah. In um, Diamond Pearl and Platinum, like Heracross for example. Heracross is a cool Pokemon, but yeah, it's just really annoying to catch in this game. Because of, um, because of the fact that, yeah, it's on, it's very rare basically, with those honey trees and stuff. But yeah, that makes me not, not want to use it basically, so yeah. But yeah, of course. But yeah, that's the main problem I have with it. But yeah, I can definitely work with it because yeah, you don't always need like a fire type, for example. You can definitely make do without one. I do like fight water grass calls though. So yeah, there's that as well. But of course, platinum would make a lot of good changes though. Like, um, like I do like a lot of the new additions. Not just Pokemon that, um, not just Pokemon that yeah. For the new evolutions, like yeah, they are like Lickitung, Magnemite, Magma to facilitate those new evolutions they got. The uh, there's also some other great Pokemon too, like um, of course the main one that comes to mind that they added was Hundu. Yeah, I really love Hundu, so it's great to see it make its return in um, 
It's great to see it make its return in um in uh, platinum. Is what I'm trying to say. I tried to think one. Oh yeah, there are definitely some other Pokemon that got the treatment too, like Swablu, for example, Absol. Yeah, those are also great to see too. So yeah. Oh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, this one's this guarantee is definitely quite difficult to catch. Here's the three catch rate if you want to know. Because yeah, they do like to change the catch rate sometimes, so yeah. Anyway. But yeah, I do like the Platinum decks, although yeah, this is definitely before this is like the last Pokemon game. Okay, there we go. It ran out of its boost, so we're gonna have to give it up. So yeah, I'll reset here, and then um, we'll, we'll go as simply as Dalek and actually catch it, so yeah, give me a little bit. Alright, it's back in red now. so yeah, let's go back to talking about those topics. So, yep, talking about the Cinedex again, yeah, like I said, I think um, Generation 4 is probably the last time we had, um, because yeah, I feel like yeah, they've greatly expanded the Pokedex, especially in Black and White too. I wouldn't count Black and White, because Black and White was purposely trying to do something very different. But it's Pokedex, so yeah. Because yeah, of course, they want to, you know, make it... They want to make a reach of it completely Pokemon, so yeah, it did that, so yeah. So... They are like... And then, yeah, once Black Light 2 happened and all future games of that, yeah, basically the Pokedex had, like, so many options. Um... Yeah. Diamond Pearl and Platinum, yeah, they would definitely be probably the last Pokemon games that had, like, more, um, limited choices, I guess. Except if you want to count Black and White, but I kind of don't, because, again, it was trying to do something different, so, yeah. But anyway, I don't think I have anything else to add to that. Yeah, like I said, I think it's alright, Pokedex. Um, Platinum obviously improved the pie a bit, which is why I prefer playing that. I know that... Very Diamond Shuffle has the underground way you can find your Pokemon there, so. And that's also a thing you can do. Probably should heal that. I have time for that, we'll sit in the truck. Anyway. So I'll use the wrong one. Anyway. So yeah, back to the talk about Seiya. Again, um. It's alright, I guess. And yeah, like I said, I do like the new Pokemon, of course. I thought they were really cool, so... Really cool, really interesting, really fun to use as well. Like, yeah, I know that future generations will do a lot better though, because yeah, most of the Pokemon in the newer decks, they all have a good use. Like, yeah, there's definitely some Pokemon in this Pokedex that kind of don't like Finion, <laughs> for example. But yeah, it's not bad. I do prefer, like, Black and White, probably. Black and White has so many amazing Pokemon. I really like, so yeah. I probably like that one a little bit more, but yeah. I probably like it more than Pokemon at least. Because again, the physical special spell is definitely a big thing for all these Pokemon, so yeah. That's one reason why I quite like them this game. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Let's move on to the next topic, which is favorite Ember Paralogs. So this is referring to Farm and Gage. The Paralogs in that game, yeah, they revolve around the Emblems. All 12 of them. You basically have to play a map that is from their game of origin, and then you have to defeat them in a battle. They're pretty simple maps because all of them are kill boss, so yeah, uh, there's a lot of things you can do with them. There we go. Gurity was cool. That didn't take too long. That was pretty average. Left. It was banished for its violence. It silently gazed upon the old world from the distortion. Yeah, that's why, yeah, again, I feel like it might have some kind of evil past or something like that, but yeah. We got Giratina, awesome. Giratina seems to have understood us. That Pokemon, that shy Pokemon's captured. Ah, it's him. Your doing so means this irrational world will remain in existence. Does that make it impossible for me to create a new world? Even if I make new red chains, the new world can't be made. Why? What compels you to protect the two worlds? Is spirit, a vague and incomplete thing, so important to you? The places we are born, the time we spend living, the languages you speak, 
We are all different, but the presence of Pokemon unites us. We share our lives with our Pokemon, our happiness grows as we, as we all become greater than we were alone. That's why we can battle and trade with anyone we choose. Silence! Enough of your blathering. That's how you justify spirit as something worthwhile? That is merely humans hoping, hoping, deluding themselves that they are happy and safe. The emotions roiling inside me. Rage, hatred, frustration. These ugly emotions arise because of my incomplete spirit. Enough, you will never see eye to eye. This, I promise you, I'll break the secrets of the world. With that knowledge, I'll create my complete and perfect world. One day, you will wake to a world of my creation. A world without spirit. Since there is sadness, you can feel joy. When there is anger, compassion is born. Let's go back home. The pool where Giratina was should lead back to our world. Giratina is written a legend as a being on the other side of our world. It stands to reason that it has a link to the other side. So let's go. And now we're here. <laughs> this place. This is sent. It's the scent of spring. It's said to somehow lead to the great beyond. And Giratina is said to live in a world on the opposite side of ours. Oh, I'm sincerely sorry, it's very rude of me. Narika, you're incredible. You really are a fantastic trainer. Let me say this on behalf of all of Sindo. Narika, thank you. Oh, that's right, you have to go tell Professor Rowan. He was very worried about you. You should visit him at his lab. That's actually our next objective. They, uh... Uh, there's a few things I want to do before we head off. There's something in Sindo Spring I want to do, and also we need to talk about Giratina a little bit more. Of yeah, course, cool, first let's heal. I still need. I still think I need Trophius at the Sendor Spring, so I'm gonna be a little bit careful. And take it along. I don't know if I want to continue talking about the topic. Maybe I will. We'll see. But yeah, and that wasn't too bad. That's only that only took around like 20 minutes. So yeah. But yeah, as you see here, the Garrett looks a little bit different. Now it's in its altered form. Um, the altered form is a bit different, obviously. It has the pressure ability now, which is actually good for it because it's extremely bulky in this form. The moves of lens are the same, so there's no need to worry about that, but of course the stats are different. Um, now it has... it basically just swaps its defense and attack. So it has 100 attack and social attack and 120 defense and social defense. So yeah, this all gets really bulky. I didn't really talk about it, but yeah, its type is also pretty good for its bulk as well, so yeah. But you might be wondering then, what about the other form then? Well, we'll get to that later. <laughs> uh, I'm probably gonna put it here, because we're gonna have a lot of legendary Pokemon to catch in this game, so yeah. And yeah, like I said, we'll get Blue Blanc, who isn't that on the level, so that's good. But yeah, we're gonna be battling with them a lot then, coming up. So let's go back to Sendor Spring, because yeah, there's something I want to do there, obviously. That'll be the last thing we'll do in this episode, and then yeah. The only problem is it's kind of a low encounter rate, so yeah, this might take a lot of time. I guess what I'll do is we'll talk about the topic. I'll finish talking about the topic, and if I don't find it, I'll just catch it on screen because I can catch it a little bit easier later in the day. So yeah, it's a book that appears more frequently at night. But anyway, where is Sindel Spring? Might be one. Well, you kind of already saw it with the with the fly, but it's on this reaction. But yeah, it's on the right side of this route. It's here. You have Spring Path, and then that leads to the Cinder Spring. So in the grass, there's one new Pokemon that... I mean, it's not a new Pokemon, it's an evolution for an old Pokemon. But it is a Pokemon that's kind of important, and that is, um... Dusclops. Dusclops learns the move Mean Look, which I kind of want coming up, so yeah. If that Pokemon doesn't work though, then I have another Pokemon in mind that's of course Gold. Go that's fast, so that's the reason to think about that Pokemon. Anyway, let's see what we can find. Yeah, let's grab the... Oh, I do have Jutayu at the front though, so yeah. That might make trying to find that a bit annoying, so yeah. I'll probably put then Electro in the front, because Electro can paralyze the Dust Cops. It's a 5% I'm pretty sure, in this place, so yeah. Anyway, 
So yeah, I'll probably just talk about this in the spring, and then yeah, we'll go back to talking about the topic. So yeah. Because I did just start talking about it, so yeah, I want to cut finish it, even though I've barely talked about anything about it. So yeah. So yeah, it's, there isn't much to it. It's like, yeah, this like giant spring, obviously, and then yeah. It's like in this kind of big circle. I'm also gonna make sure that this hook is actually good. And the answer is, um, yes. And, it get, and yeah, it is a 5% kind of. But during the night, it's a 15% kind of, so again, if it takes too long to find it now, I'll just catch it later. And yeah, like I said, we're looking for dust crabs. There's a chink. Alright. Same thing, yeah. What else is here? But yeah, Cynthia's there. I believe she's actually blocking something that's a post game area, so yeah. So again, we're just going to. I'm actually kind of curious to see what she has to say. I believe there's hint items around her, so yeah, maybe I should be using the dozen machine. You have to go to tell Professor Rowe about this at his lab. He was very worried about it. But yeah, that's the next thing you have to do. Like, if you try to go to the next actual area, yeah, you'll get blocked off again, so yeah. I think I remember that happening when I played this before the end. We're running to a lot of them, so yeah, I think I'm going to start talking about the topics so yeah. Or well, continue talking about the topics. So yeah, this is my favorite emblem paralog. So yeah, again, like I said, um, each emblem has their own paralog. Being it will give you rank 20 of the bond level. For the bond level. You can get up there, which is very useful because that gives you access to the last weapon and also, yeah. More stat boost, more skills, all that good stuff. But yeah, what are my favorite maps? Well, but yeah, you may also lose this. Yeah, that's kind of random. But yeah, there's not much to this place actually, so yeah, never mind me. So let's just gonna run the grass scene and find this weapon. Kind of. But anyway. So. So yeah, back to that. Yeah, like I said, my favorite in Parallax. Well, my favorite is also my favorite map in Engage, and that's the Leaf Parallax. Yeah, it's based on one of the most famous Frasier maps. It has an amazing battle theme. That battle theme actually tears me up at how good it is. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's also quite a challenging map in a good way. Kind of like Frasier, the game itself. You do have to go out of your... You do have to go kind of all out with it. If you try to take it on immediately after the locks, you're gonna have a rough time because you kinda want Makaya back. Because her rewolf is really useful. Her augment rewolf is really useful for taking out the initial wave of Ballista. Because yeah, the gimmick of that map is the Ballista are super strong for some reason, and also the Star Stars are more accurate too, so yeah. It's really interesting stuff, and yeah, the reinforcements spawn in a pretty similar place to the original game, although the boss is a lot less threatening than in the original game, so yeah. There's that. Because yeah, that's the thing about Leaf. Because of the Master Lance, he's actually really easy to beat. His Light Brand is scary, but as long as you make sure he doesn't use it against you, there's not really much problem, so yeah. So yeah. But I do have another favourite that I want to talk about, and that's of course Makaya's Prowler, which is based on one of my favourite maps in Radiant Dawn 313. It's a pretty good recreation. Lots of enemies. The map itself is pretty different though, because 313 used to have a lot of ledges to take a bunch of, and now it doesn't really. But yeah, it's a, well, defend map. And it actually does play some of the original, because eventually Makai will spawn a lot of reinforcements, and the reinforcements are based on the allies in the Dawn Brigade, which is really it's a very fun map. I also really like that one. Again, the music, yeah, it's um, it's a remix of Bearer of Hope, which is, again, one of my favorite tracks in... Um, one of my favorite Emblem Parallel tracks, and yeah, one of my favorite tracks in the original, too, so yeah. And yeah, it also played on 313 as well, so that's awesome, too. I don't know if I could say 313, one of my favorite maps in Far Above Ever, but yeah, it's definitely a very good one, so yeah. Alright, 
I say it's probably the better of the two defend mats because I guess the problem with the Lynch's Gambit is that um, it's very easy to beat like quickly because all you need to do is kill the boss and um, Har is good at doing that so yeah because you can give him a hammer so yeah. Then when you do that yeah the boss dies. <laughs> But yeah, with 3.13 though, it's a lot harder to kill the boss and end the map because it's Oak, so yeah. Yeah, those are definitely my favourites. I also really liked Sickards too. That's another notable one as well that I really liked. It's a pretty good recreation of that final bit of chapter 10. Ian has a Julius and Ishtok cameo of 2, which is really cool. And a lot of people don't know this, but there's a hidden goddess icon where you get the tear thing in the original, which is interesting, but yeah. <laughs> I don't, that definitely took me a while to actually figure out. It's a cool reference, I kinda wish it was where Cellar Cement with Sigurd is, because it's kinda difficult to reach where the tear thing is, because Sigurd will rush you. And yeah, once he does, you kinda want to stop him, because you can't freeze him, so uh, yeah. The only way to really stop him is Mox Cement. He doesn't have pass or anything like that, which is good, so yeah. But yeah, those are definitely my favorite three. And engage. And again, like I said, the lead paralog is probably my favorite map of the game, because yeah, it kinda just. <laughs> I feel like it does test you very well, especially with your ability to use stars, which again, that's something that Freesh is very well known for, so yeah, I really like that a lot. The uh, Grappler and Beaver are the most common encounters here, so yeah, that's how we're running into a lot of them, so yeah. And it's starting. So yeah, I think that's it. Again, I'm probably gonna try and locate um, Dust Clocks later. Because again, it's a bit more common in the night, so yeah, I'll just wait for a difficult night. <laughs> Then I'll catch one. I'll uh, show it to you in the next part, I guess. So, yeah. And again, the reason why I'm catching it is because it's a bulky Pokemon Meeple. Now, I don't know if the Pokemon needs to be fast, but just in case, I'm, I think while I'm going to catch the Dust Cost, I'll also catch a Gold Bat because it should have Meeple at these levels as well. I guess I can do that. I'll also check to make sure the Dust Cost also gets me look at this level. Then I know if I need to level it up or screen a little bit as well. Yeah, let me have a look. So, Mean Look is actually at 43, so yeah, I do need to level up the boss class a little bit, but we don't need the Mean Look immediately. It's for one of the legendary Pokemon that we can, I believe, catch now, so yeah. But yeah, I'll worry about that later. And then, what about Gulda? I guess, yeah, I'll mention that one. We're just trying to run around trying to find this one. You know, Golvat learns a Mean Look at 33, which probably means it starts with this. That's cool. So again, both Pokemon definitely can be used for um, this strategy. And yeah, later on though, I'm definitely going to need a stronger Mean Look Pokemon though, because you yeah. know... I might as well say, yeah, there's a lot of roaming Pokemon in this game. <laughs> oh no. I don't even know if I want to try and catch all of them. I'll try, but... Yeah, I'm not going to be very happy, <laughs> let's just say while I'm doing that. I at least want to catch... There's... Two of them are new Pokemon in this game, and three of them are old actually Pokemon, so yeah. I want to see if I can try and catch at least the new ones, so yeah. And yeah, find a lot of people, so... I think I'll make it one more encounter. If I can't find it, I'll just catch... Um... Dust Pops later. And yeah, it's just a big one, so yeah, learn the part, yeah. And yeah, I'll save the rest of the topics I got for future Legendary Pokemon, because again, we have a lot of them to catch in this game, so yeah. That's why I'm probably going to be asking for a lot of topics later as well, so yeah. I said that would be the last encounter, but then I found another Beeple, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, not much you can do, because again, it's a 5% count at the time we're calling this, so yeah. Because it's during the day. Again, it's a 15% counter in the night, so yeah, we can try and take a bunch of that, so yeah. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna end the part now. So yeah, next time, yeah, I'm gonna catch that dust squats. I'm not so sure... I'm not so sure how I'm gonna get Meemuk on it. I'm probably gonna, like, maybe use me share it a little bit, we'll see. I still run into the book on <laughs> Yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do. Again, I don't need to get it Meemuk right away. I'm probably gonna maybe catch our first Roma after we beat our final ship. I think that's... Wise. Yeah, I'm probably gonna do that. Then after that, yeah, we're going to... Well, yeah. I think that's why we're gonna be catching more Legend of Pokemon, because, yeah, we just caught Giratina. I think that's good enough for the time being. I want to make some progress, because, yeah, it's been a while since we took down our last ship leader, so... But, yeah, we're gonna be also going to see Professor Rowan, because we did tell him that we beat Team Galactic and we caught Giratina, so, yeah. <laughs> I keep saying this is going to be the last one. This will actually be the last one, I promise. <laughs> so yeah, that's just... That might be better Pokemon for what I'm trying to do, but yeah. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> I'll see if I'm even able to you know, get them, but yeah. So yeah, that's that. So yeah, next time we're going to be... Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna go catch that dust box. I'm going to, and then yeah, we're gonna be progressing. On. We're gonna talk to the rest of the road, and then we're gonna be heading off to where the final ship is. So yeah, look forward to that, and I'll see you guys again for that.